Most of us in the US have become used to the sight of Nissan NV300 fans as taxis or small delivery runabouts, but there is more to this platform, as Nissan revealed in Spain this week. Say hello to the ENV200 and NV300 camper concepts, concepts that are actually going into production, at least in Europe, for now. Designed with a retro flair, the campers feature a large couch that transforms into a bed, fold-out tables, roof tents, roll-up canopies and bike racks, among other items. The camper concepts also feature a sink along with a stove, a pantry for dry food items, plus a mini fridge. Both are also pretty compact. Most campers offered in Europe tend to be based on larger and longer vans, ranging from the latest VW transporters at the smaller end of the scale, to larger campers based on commercial van chassis from automakers such as Renault and Mercedes-Benz. The Nissan NV models, when put into production, will be some of the smallest van-based campers on the market simply because MPVs of the size aren't usually the starting points for camper conversions. As appealing as these look in equally retro two-tone colors, we can't help but think that this is the future of affordable housing in San Francisco, especially in electric form. Really, what else do you need besides a bathroom and a shower? It's really like a houseboat, but for the road, and with zero emissions. Heavily camouflaged while testing on the streets of Detroit, the 2020 Subaru Legacy will ride on the new Subaru Global Platform. Like other automakers, Subaru is working on a new modular architecture that will eventually underpin all future Subaru models. Not only does this help cut down on product development time and expenses for Subaru, it will allow the Japanese automaker to assemble multiple vehicle models at the same plant. The company is also said to be working on its next generation of four-cylinder boxer engines. Based on the current architecture, the next-gen engines will add direct injection, and by the 2020 model year, Subaru will also add cylinder deactivation to help improve fuel economy. The next generation legacy should be offered as a 2020 model year, so expect to also see the new engines used in the mid-size sedan. Look for the new legacy to debut sometime next year. Just about every week it seems an automaker announces or reveals a new vehicle or puts a new spin on an old vehicle that millennials will just love. Even the pitches that are tone deaf are usually met with the same eye-rolling response, many millennials are settled with debt and working a job beneath their education because it's all they could get. Given enough chances, it was only a matter of time before an automaker actually hit the target, and Nissan may have done it. Buying the base model of an entry-level car used to mean you couldn't even get power windows or door locks, and it wasn't that long ago Bluetooth and automatic headlights were restricted to pricier trim levels. Rear cameras only became standard this year because the government mandated it. Things are getting better for the value shopper in general as customers expect more from their vehicles, but the 2018 Nissan Kicks takes it a big step forward. The 2018 Kick standard features read like a list of things you normally wish you could get as options on a base model. Automatic emergency braking and forward collision alert. Automatic headlights. Three USB ports. Tilting and telescoping steering wheel. Automatic up-down front windows. Keyless entry and push-button start. A 7.0-inch touchscreen infotainment system with Bluetooth phone and streaming audio. All of that for $18,965. If you can scrape a few more pennies together, though, it's worth an extra month of eating ramen for the mid-grade SV model. The 2018 Kicks SV picks up an upgraded infotainment system with CarPlay and Android Auto and satellite radio, automatic climate control, 
blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic monitoring, a cargo cover, remote engine starting, and alloy wheels for $20,665 all said and done. Unless you really want LED headlights and a surround view camera system, skip past the $21,265 SR trim, as it's mostly cosmetic, though it does add a few lines of software to the engine and chassis computers that are supposed to make it handle a little better. If you're going to splurge anyway, bank, borrow, or steal the extra $1,000 and get the loaded SR with the premium package. To the SR niceties it adds nice faux leather seats with heaters up front, a security system, and a phenomenal Bose Personal Plus 8 speakers stereo. Let's take a moment to talk about this stereo. You're lucky if you can even get a premium stereo upgrade in a car that maxes out at $22,265 before accessories, and it usually just takes you from it plays music to this sounds decent. The Bose stereo in this kicks. No joke, sounds better than the base stereo in the $180,000 Bentley Bentayga. Play an uncompressed audio file off your phone, and marvel at the clarity of the individual instruments and the breadth of the sound stage, then remind yourself this is a $22,000 car. Part of the trick is a pair of speakers in the driver's headrest, which are there to manipulate the stage, not blow out your eardrums, though you can hear a difference if you turn your head all the way to the right or left. The stereo can be adjusted to focus sound at the driver when you're alone in the car. Fitting all these features into this price point did require decisions on Nissan's part, some tough and some curious. For example, rear parking sensors, a Rockford Fosgate subwoofer, an auto-dimming rearview mirror, and ambient interior lighting are all either standalone accessories or a small accessories package rather than rolled into a trim level or larger package. The upshot here is you can buy exactly what matters to you. In other cases, though, you're left hanging. Because the kick shares a platform with the Versa and Versa Note, all-wheel drive is not available. Nissan also opted against a navigation option, so your phone will have to suffice when service permits. Adaptive cruise control is also off the menu despite the automatic emergency braking system using a radar module and adaptive cruise only requiring some code and a steering wheel button. If you'd like any of this, you'll need to step up to the more expensive Rogue Sport. If you can live without all-wheel drive, However, there's a lot to like about the way the Kicks drives. A 1.6-liter i4 with a CVT driving the front wheels is your only option, and despite offering an underwhelming 125 horsepower and 115 pounds FT, it's much better than it sounds. Nissan's got an ace up its sleeve, and its acclaimed curb weight under 2,700 pounds, 200 pounds to 500 pounds less than competitors. Critically, the kicks always feels like it's trying. This engine delivers a sense of urgency that's absent from the CHR, and it doesn't struggle with hills at freeway speeds like the HRV does. Yeah, like the rest of them, it's still slow, but you don't feel like you need to floor it to avoid being run over. When you do floor it, the kicks feels like it's actually moving. Part of this is thanks to new transmission software that finally whips Nissan CVT into shape. The rubber band feel associated with some CVTs is gone, and when you really get into the gas pedal it automatically begins simulating shifts. It's much more like the class leading CVTs from Honda and Subaru and finally not a liability paired up with the eager to please drive a train, the variable steering rack doesn't feel variable. It gives you linear and predictable steering response in corners with a nice way to it. The same can be said of the brake pedal. All of your inputs are met with the exact response you'd expect from them, which makes the kicks very pleasant to drive. In the city, the super tight U-turn radius is handy, and the surprisingly flat body control makes it fun to hustle. The tires have more grip than you'd expect and don't make any noise even when you're pushing them, though they do get loud on a concrete freeway. However you plan to drive it, you'll appreciate the large windows and the excellent outward visibility they provide. It's great Nissan offers blind spot monitoring and a surround view camera system, 
but it's even better they don't feel like mandatory equipment, as on some cars with their gun slit windows. Up front, the cabin feels big and airy, especially for such a small vehicle. There's tons of leg and headroom up there, but the space around the driver's knee is cramped. My right knee was always touching the center console. The rear seat is more cramped, especially for the long-legged. The cargo area is surprisingly large and still fits a space saver spare tire. Unfortunately, the second road doesn't fold flat, leaving you a two-level expanded cargo space. The rest of the interior is what you'd expect for a sub minus $23,000 car. It's all plastic, unless you get in Steridian with its nice stitched faux leather wrap on the dash. The quality of the plastic is fine, as is fit and finish. The design is mostly inoffensive, though the door panels are big black slabs with a single trim piece to liven them up. Enjoy all the headroom, and don't look up at the mouse fur headliner in retro 90s map light console. Nissan calls the kick stylish and tip and says the kids will love it, but here's the straight talk, the kicks is surprisingly well equipped with features you actually want, and it boasts killer fuel economy. If all-wheel drive isn't a must-have, it's hard to come up with another compelling reason to keep the kicks off your shopping list.